Hey guys. Let's catch up. So, as you know, I am a senior in nursing school. I have so many stories to tell you guys about nursing school. It's like not even funny. I'm trying to get back on my posting. It's more so going to be once a week because the NCLEX is coming. The exit is coming. If you don't know what that is, the exit is pretty much the exam that we take to graduate. It's the exam that's saying, yeah, you good to go. <laughs> you good to go. And honestly, guys, I'm really, really nervous about it. I don't know why. I feel like I'm pretty good in ATI. You see these books right here? If your school gives you these books for ATI, use them. Um, if you guys take a CMS in your nursing program, I know all nursing programs are a little bit different, but if you guys take a CMS for your nursing program, you want to use these books. These books are your life. Don't listen to your teacher's PowerPoint. That's for their test. A lot of my teachers make their own tests. <laughs> Okay, so you want to make sure that you're using your ATI books, okay? But I'll make a whole, like, how to survive nursing school, how I pass my CMS. I'll make all of those videos. But right now, I just want to catch up with you guys because it's been a while. It's been a long time since I left you. And I know me to step two, a step two, step two, a step two, a step two. Chicka, 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 ow. But it's been a really long time. I'll see you guys. I feel like I need to give you guys an update. Still in the same city. Okay, um... I've spent a lot of time to myself, not really hanging out with anybody or anything like that. Just spending a lot of time with me and really like, I don't know. I feel like I really need, I really want to reinvent myself. I really want to get away from being such an angry person. I know I don't look at it, but I fight anger demons <laughs> on the daily basis. And I'm really trying to recenter myself and really just get more into my softer Error because one I, I I always have to tell myself you can't get mad at somebody that can't beat you up it's okay Kanisha they can't beat you up so since I've been in that mindset that it's like it's fine let's be for real they can't beat you up like don't don't even give somebody that's under you a chance okay because that puts you down there too you know what I mean so I've been really just trying to embrace you know my girly my feminineness and it's been feeling really great um but yeah, that that's what's going on with me. I'm a senior in nursing school, set to graduate, well, set to be completed with my program December 5th, right? At Well, it'll be the week before December 5th if I pass the exit, which I will. I'm going to pass the exit on the first try. But um, when I pass the exit on the first try, actually, it'll be the end of November, which is next month because today is October 21st. <laughs> today is October 21st crazy that's so crazy but um so i have my pinning ceremony december 5th and we still don't have a date for graduation and i'm supposed to be moving in december so and i don't see how they're gonna do graduation okay hear me out so this is how it's set up the end of the semester is december 5th yeah and then pinning is the i think the week after that december 13th which is my birthday so that's gonna be a cute little vlog because it's gonna be like pinning and then my birthday. That's gonna be so cute. Oh my god. Mm. I don't even think I did a birthday vlog last year. I think I did the year before that. So it's gonna be cute. And then I don't know how graduation is gonna work because the week after that is what Christmas and the week after that is what New Year's. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I hopefully I get to go to my ceremony. I mean, duh, like I work so hard. My school is so expensive. Like I hope I get to go to the ceremony, but this only time will tell. Okay. And time will tell, okay? I've been going on, like, nursing interviews. And let me tell you guys something. Actually, show you better than I can tell you. I was working on my freaking nursing school, like, nursing resume. Because I felt like I wanted to go more of like the healthcare route. So I did update my resume. I made it look so cute. And I tried to like pinpoint it more for like a nursing student. And when I tell you that, I did not use my school's help. Because my school would be like, send it to us so we can look at it. No. <clears throat> no. Mine is perfect the way she is. So this is what she looked like. Don't look too hard though. Don't be in my business. But this is what it looked like. It's so beautiful. 
and it's so good that I think I want to make a video of, like showing you guys how I did my nursing school resume because it's so pretty and I think that's such a helpful video because I try to find videos about nursing school resume and people don't really show you how to do it they just be like this is my resume that's what it got me <laughs> they don't really show you anything so and I also want to make a video about my nursing school schedule because that was also something that I was looking up forever and couldn't find nowhere. Like, nobody was really telling me what to do, what to do. Um, I also want to make a video about head-to-toe assessments because I couldn't find a really, really good video about head-to-toe. And the head-to-toe that we had to do was super thorough. And I feel like the ones that I found online were just too quick because ours was literally head to toe okay and i think making a little video explaining it showing you guys my tips and tricks and how i was able to nail it on my first sign off would be awesome i do just want to make a little bit of more nursing school videos just to kind of you know get all the nursing booze that's coming up behind me get y'all ready get y'all get y'all prepared um tell you guys what you do need and what you don't need for clinicals because let me tell you something i carry a backpack to my uh capstone that i'm in now only have four more rotations and after this week, because it's doubled up, I'm going to have to. I'm almost done with calf stuff. I'm almost done with clinicals forever. That is, wow. Like, time just, mm. Mm. But in this backpack, I really don't carry nothing except, like, my stethoscope. Um, Maybe a pen light. They have me in the ER, and things are so different in the ER. Shout out to the ER nurses. I'm not going to be an ER nurse. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. And also, um, this is to people that are not in the healthcare field. Can you not tell people what you think or what you feel they should do? Because I told a lady that I want to go into cardiology. And she was like, yeah, you need to like start off in the med surge. How about you mind your business? Because you work at... Never mind. Never mind. Just don't don't put your opinions on other people unless you have a nursing school degree and you're giving me valid or good advice. I'm not going to listen to you. If you're just a patient's parent, I don't want to hear your suggestions. The lady is going to look at me and say, you should go to peds. I said, mm, I don't mind peds like I have kids, but I, I can't I don't like kids being hurt. I can't do it because I might see oh I might see the parent and just start fading out. You feel me? So I can't <laughs> I can't be in peds, right? Like I don't like to see children hurt. So or sick or anything like that. Oh. Like can you imagine kids in a cardiac unit? Oh, I, it would just hurt me. Like you don't deserve this. I know about face some adults that deserve to be in this position and not this baby right here. Okay, so yeah, she was just like, oh, I think you should go to cardiology. Well, no, she told me I need to go to pediatrics. But I should start off on the, you should start off on the med search floor. I was like, no, this is not 1964. Actually, I can do whatever I want. You don't tell me what to do. I can do whatever I want. And this is why there's new grad residency programs. To kind of help you integrate into the floor that you want to do. Into the specialty that you want to do. This is not where you guys was not advocating for yourself. And you were stuck on mess surge knowing that you want to be in peds. You wasn't advocating for yourself. One thing I'm going to do is advocate for myself any way, shape, or form. And if I feel unsafe or I feel like I can't do something, guess what? I'm going to advocate for myself. Are you crazy? The, I, I did not miss sleep, miss events, miss, miss life for two and a half years to lose my license. Okay? Which is why I'm applying for new grad residencies. I know a lot of new guys don't want to do that. They just want to hop into it, not me. I'd be, I'd be a nurse I'd be a nurse for one month and you want to make me a charger cause y'all short that no no maybe I'm gonna be like absolutely no I decline and you know what I'm a, who can I write the letter to to let him know that I decline I'm not doing it I, you need to advocate for yourself for your safety for your patient's safety advocate the hell People always act like that they have to do something like somebody's forced you to do something this is your license at the end of the day I know I'm going off topic. I don't care. Okay. But yeah, I'm really big on advocating for myself. If I don't like something or I don't like somebody or I don't like what's going on, guess what? I'm going to tell them. I remember, let me tell you a little story real quick. I had a preceptor that I did not want me. Okay. First of all, they threw me with her and I could look in her face and tell she didn't want me. I don't know. I think she was mad because she had wrinkles and I don't. Ha! <laughs> Clock that tea. But she did not want me. Like, she was like, yeah, you can follow around my um tech. First of all, I'm a medical assistant. Shout out to the techs, the CNAs. All of the jobs in the hospital matter, okay? Even the janitors. Everybody's job matters. And I see that I see that in the 
ER, you know? Everybody's job matters because if that janitor don't go clean that room after somebody done bled everywhere, nobody can't use that room and people gonna be in the waiting room forever. You know, everybody's job is essential. But let me tell you something. I have my medical assistant. I did not spend $90,000 on it. I'm in nursing school paying $90,000 to get my skills, to get some skills, to, to come on. I'm paying a lot of money to be here. So she was like, you can go follow my tech. So I went with the tech for a little bit. I was like, okay, cool. I'm following the tech. The tech has me doing, you know, tech work, which as a nurse, you should be able to jump in and help at any time. Fight me if you want to, you're going to lose. I don't care if you're a nurse, an MP, whatever you do. If you see that somebody on your team is struggling, you should jump in and help. <laughs> And that's one thing I do like about the culture of the um, emergency room that I'm in. Anytime somebody needs help or they're struggling, they help. When somebody called for help in the waiting room, the entire team went out there to support them. That's what I like to see. So, yes, you should be doing tech work. But I'm paying $9,000 right now. Now I've got time for that, okay? So I followed her. We did a little Doppler. She's like, have you ever did a Doppler to like listen? And I was like, I have. So yeah, sure. We did a Doppler to listen. And I was like, hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not I'm not doing this for 12 hours. So I went to her. I was like, oh, well, is there like anything that I can help you with? Like, are you going to pass meds? She's like, I already passed my meds. Um, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what else to have you do because I'm already caught up. And honestly, I'm going to go downstairs and get some coffee. You can do whatever you want. Now, any other person would have said, okay, cool, I'm going to sit around and do homework or something. No, not me. My homework was already done because I go to clinicals to get my what? My skills. I, I go to clinicals to kind of try to get my skills because nursing school don't teach you how to be a nurse. Nursing school teaches you how to pass these tests and give you information so that you're able to critically think. That's what nursing school does. That's what I'm paying $100,000 for. But when I go to clinicals, this is what I'm supposed to be able to do my skills. All the stuff that I learned in skills lab, I'm supposed to be able to use that in the real world. Uh... I was like, mm. I was like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm just going to go find my preceptor and try to get placed with someone else. And then she just stood there. She was like, huh? No, don't harm me. You heard me. So I went to my teacher. I said, hey, you placed me with someone that don't want me. I'm not spending all this money to sit around and do my homework. I, I want to do stuff. I want to see stuff. I want to learn stuff. Especially because we was on a cardiology floor and I like cardiac. So don't take this away from me. Don't don't take this from me because you don't want a student. Just say you don't want a fucking student. Don't ruin this experience for me because you don't want a student. And I'm not going to let you, old lady. <laughs> I'm not going to let you geriatric. <laughs> okay. So I went to my teacher. She was like, oh, okay. Um, all right, let's let's try to put you in the ICU. Let's see if there's anyone for the I, for you for the ICU. They had a little traveler that was there. She was like, honestly, this is my third day on the floor, but I'll take you. Like, what can you do? What can you help me with? Like, I'll take you. Like, that's not a problem. A traveler took me. And she was the nice. Shout out to the traveler. Okay, she didn't know what stuff was. But guess what? Because I already did this rotation, I knew where a lot of the stuff was. So I was able to support her and she was able to support my learning. She was explaining all types of things to me and teaching me how to use the machines and how to use the pumps and letting me do stuff and letting me explain things to pay shout out to the traveler hello staff you should be embarrassed and that's why y'all short staff now y'all got nothing but travelers on the floor because you want to act like that to the to the students and i actually like cardiology that's what pissed me off the most because i was like dang i actually like cardiology i'm not gonna let this wrinkle face hoe ruin this for me i'm not advocate for yourself even if you're a student that's what your teacher is there for support your teacher, if you go to your teacher and say, hey, this nurse don't want me, guess what? This is not 1964. If you don't want me, guess what? I'm going to go to somebody that do. What are you talking about? Send me to somebody that do want me. I'm sure there's people on here out here that want help. You see all these nurses out here that got their students running around helping them. And you sweating, tired. You're sweating. You're tired because you don't want a student. Now you're doing everything by yourself. Because you want to take a few minutes to just explain something. You're pathetic. And I'm pretty sure you got treated that way in nursing school. That's why you're trying to do it to me? Ha! No. Always one step ahead. <laughs> Anyways, enough of that round. Because that just, ooh, that just sparks something in me. Look, if you're a nursing student right now, advocate for yourself. You, advocate for yourself. 
every clinical experience is a chance for you to grow your skills and to grow your knowledge and to be a better nurse when you get out there. Because one day you're not going to have a preceptor and it's just going to be you. Take everything you're learning in clinicals. Ask to do everything. Ask to see and ask questions. Why are we giving this med? What's this med for? Why are we giving this med? Can I give it? Oh, that's injection. Can I give it? How do I do it? Can I give it? There was an injection that I did during my ER rotation this weekend. I've never seen... I feel like I've learned it. I know I've learned it because it's like a... It can cause like chest pain when you take it. It's like for migraines, but it causes chest pain. I'm going to look it up. It causes chest pain. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to think of the medication. Hold on, I'm going to look it up. Sumatriptan. Now, I remember... Because, I mean, look, if I seen the world, it could be a tail look. But I remember that medication specifically causes chest pain, right? Like, that's one of the big, like, box information that you have to t give your patient when you're giving them that medication, right? But I've never seen it. And even the nurse that I was with, he's been a nurse for five years. He's like, I, oh, I gave this, like, two years ago and I never gave it again. You know what I mean? So I was looking at the instructions and he was just like, you know what? I think you can do it. Like, how about you go give it? And it looks like an EpiPen. It literally looks like an EpiPen. Like, it works kind of like an EpiPen does. Or kind of like those insulin pens do. So, he let me give it. And I gave her the education. And I felt like a nurse because I was like, oh, my God. Like, I remember studying this medication. So, I'm able to, like, tell you the stuff that I know about it. And he was just like, good job with the education. It's good to have support. Now, I don't like being in the ER. I'm not an ER girl. ER is not... It's not for me. It's not for me because this weekend there was two people that came with a stimmy and they let me do stuff, which was great because I was able to like quickly do the EK, the way they do the EKG probes drives me crazy. Look, they be like, okay, so you know, normally you do all the extremities and then right across the left side, okay? They do theirs like boom, boom for the extremities on the stomach for your lower extremities and then boom, 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 boom. Or they do the five lead, which is up here for the upper extremities down here for the lower extremities and then one in the middle for v1 and i never see them count like i count like i like to count but they, whatever it's the er they don't they don't do stuff by the book and it throws me off so bad but i guess like this is what it is like it's an emergency we don't have time kanisha <laughs> we don't have time kanisha for you to be struggling to put on your sterile gloves for the foley we don't have time because let me tell you something i was sweating bullets Cause it was watching me like get ready to put a foley in. I'm sweating bullets. They don't got time. I'm not an ER nurse. I need time. Okay. I need a minute. I need a minute to do this. Okay. You cannot rush me. I was like over there fumbling with the. <laughs> I was over there fumbling. They was just like, let's get another kid. Yeah. <laughs> it was insane. But yeah, nursing school, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I feel like it's going to open a lot of doors. But that's my update with nursing school. Um, four more rotations. After this week, I'll have two. After Halloween, that's it. I'm done. I'll be done. I do want to go out for Halloween, so hopefully I can vlog that. I'm trying to go out and get stupid because I feel like this is my last night out. I don't want to tell my friend that I'm leaving. <sighs> is that rude or weird? Like, I just don't want to tell her because I feel like it's going to feel too real. Like, dang, I'm really leaving. I have to start all over. Like, I don't really want to tell her. But, I mean, she has to know. But it's going to hurt my heart. Because I feel like I haven't really even seen her because I've been, like, wrapped up in nursing school. You know what I mean? So, I haven't had time to hang out with her or anything like that. Like, I've been really trying to prioritize this. And it's like, dang. I've probably seen her maybe, like, three three times this year. This year. Did you hear me? that's crazy so i feel really bad but yeah guys long story yeah. short if you're a nurse to advocate for yourself because only you can advocate for you only you know what you want to get out of this only you know what you need to get out of this yes so that's nursing school that's life right now um what else has changed my daughter is eight my son is nine they grew up so fast i have like vlogs on here from when they were like little bitty in like 2020 they grow up so fast 
my daughter just recently had a little um award thing i might like put a little uh picture of her in there she had a little award ceremony and i was like oh my gosh you remind me of me because when i was in elementary school i used to be getting awards too i was like and i also had parent conference and i don't know why parent conference makes me so awkward but i think i have a little bit of trauma when it comes to parent conference because i'll be going on there ready to fight the teacher <laughs> I be going in there ready because one of her teachers was like, oh, she, um, like when she talks, like I told her, like she needs to talk louder. And I'm like, she's soft spoken. She's like, yeah, she's very soft. She's soft spoken. Like I was ready to knock that lady out. Like, like don't talk about like she talking. She's a very demure and very mindful. She not loud like the rest of you hoes. Okay. She very, yes. She's very soft spoken. She's a lady. She's not a quarterback. What you want her to sound like? Shrek? Shut up, lady. I was like, she's soft spoken. That's how she is. She's like, oh yeah, I understand. Um, and I'm also gonna start saying her homework. I said, okay. Like, I'd be ready to slap a teacher. <laughs> no, but for real, don't ever say my daughter's soft spoken. I mean, don't ever say she be talking low. She's soft spoken, okay? And that's how demure. She's very demure. She's very mindful, okay? She don't need to be screaming around like the rest of these badass kids. She's not going to be screaming around. She's going to be like, mm. Like when all those kids were sitting up and being loud. And you know what my daughter was doing? Sitting up. With her face stuck. She said, this is, what is this? <laughs> A bunch of animals. Anyways, I got to get my kids some Halloween costumes. And I also need to get me a costume. And I'm telling y'all, every year I'm something cute, okay? We're going to... to put some footage in here somewhere every year i'm cute this year i want to be something scary i want to do something different because i really want to have a good time i'm out on the town this year i don't want to worry about my hair i don't want to about makeup i don't want to worry about none of that i want to be scary i want to be something rawr, like i want to be something <laughs> i want to be something scary this year we got to figure out what i'm going to be for halloween like i really don't know <sighs> but anyways i made this instant coffee milk and i call it coffee milk because look how light this is yeah, I'm one of those people. Diabetic coffee milk, okay? But what am I going to do for the rest of the day? I'm going to go get the kids later. I have laundry. I don't know if you heard my washing machine go off. I need to put it on laundry array. Um, I deep cleaned the house yesterday. And yesterday, technically yesterday, I came back from clinicals. Okay, okay so this is how it Sorry. This is how it works. Friday, I go to clinicals from... 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Okay, I get home at 8 a.m. That was I got home Saturday at 8 a.m. Okay, went to bed as soon as I got home. Went to bed as soon as I got home. I woke up at three. At three. You know what that means? That now I have to get ready to go back. So I got ready, went back, got home yesterday at 8 a.m. And I tried to stay up as long as I could. I stayed up to 8.30. Went to bed. Went to bed and woke up at... Okay, I woke up at 2. Then I went back to sleep because my whole house was asleep. Everybody was asleep. I was like, oh, everybody's sleeping. Because I feel like Sundays in this house, like, people, it's a sleepy day for us. <laughs> I feel like Sundays is a sleepy day for everybody. Like, everybody just... My kids be napping. Everybody's napping, okay? So I got up. Everybody was asleep. I said, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Went back to bed. Did not get back up until 5. And I started cooking. And then I stayed up until what? Midnight? Because we were supposed to film the podcast, but we didn't film it. So I was like, okay, cool. I just was like studying and doing practice questions. Because I do have two exams. I have like a practice exam for Capstone B. We did Capstone A already. And I want to do better and improve my score for Capstone B. So I have that on Wednesday. And then I also have a test that matters and counts towards my grade. And that is leadership. And let me tell you something about leadership. I, I don't like I don't like the test. Okay, I don't like the test. But anyways, I'm gonna study the best I can, have enough information the best I can. If I score seventy, she's gonna give points back, and it's fine, and I'm gonna pass. That's the one. This is the that's the type of class it is. 
Okay, we get a 70, you're gonna walk away with an 86. That's the type of class it is because our tests are so like, why you ask? I don't like when teachers make their own questions because it's like, why you ask it like that? It's like saying, what? I can't even explain it. It's like the way they ask the questions is like, okay, there was just an easier way for you to say that. Like, okay, that's what you were asking. Like, you could have asked it like this. You could have just. Anyways, I have an NCLEX boot camp that I need to attend. So, honestly, guys, like, let's attend it together. Like, well, all right. Good. I like the hands up. Right? Good. I'm glad to see those hands up. But it's exhausting, isn't it, to read through all of them? Right? So, I'm going to show you a technique that I like to use for my students and what we like to do, what I like to do personally been sitting in here for like an hour um i might go ahead and just end this and i'll see you guys in the next one bye y'all